See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Very pleased to be able to fill in for uh, Canon Jerry in his absence. Um, you will all have, most of you have heard of this, that Monsignor uh, Seamus Gilbar died on Monday, and, and uh, he will be fondly remembered in this parish, especially where he was parish priest for. 13 years, but he would be well known and respected throughout the diocese for his great work for Catholic uh, schools and Catholic education in general, especially in the 70s and into the 80s. We remember him especially in our Mass. May he rest in peace. James was uh, talented, pastoral and gentle priest. May his place now be high in heaven. As regards the um, funeral arrangements, uh, I've been told uh, it's by invitation to the funeral mass on Friday at 11 o'clock, but if you would like to come to the reception, um, you just come please, on the Thursday at half past four. Uh, but if you want to attend the funeral mass, do please email the parish website. I, I hope that's clear. So um, we begin our Mass as always by acknowledging our sinfulness, our failures of the past, and by humbly seeking the mercy and the forgiveness of God, our Heavenly Father. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Lord. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And have the joyful hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. prophet Jeremiah. Doom for the shepherds who allow the flock of my pasture to be destroyed and scattered. 
It is the Lord who speaks. This, therefore, is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds in charge of my people. You have let my flock be scattered and go wandering, and have not taken care of them. Right, I will take care of you for your misdeeds. It is the Lord who speaks. But the remnant of my flock I myself will gather from all the countries where I have dispersed them, and will bring them back to their pastures. They shall be fruitful and increase in numbers. I will raise up shepherds to look after them and pasture them. No fear, no terror for them any more. Not one shall be lost. It is the Lord who speaks. See, the days are coming, it is the Lord who speaks, when I will raise a virtuous branch from David, who will reign as true king and be wise, practicing honesty and integrity in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel dwell in confidence. And this is the name he will be called, the Lord our integrity. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ Jesus, you that used to be so far apart from us have been brought very close by the blood of Christ. For he is the peace between us and has made the two into one and broken down the barrier which used to keep them apart, actually destroying in his own person the hostility caused by the rules and decrees of the law. This was to create one single new man in himself out of the two of them, and by restoring peace through the cross, to unite them both in a single body and reconcile them with God. In his own person he killed the hostility. Later he came to bring the good news of peace, peace to you who were far away, and peace to you who were near at hand. Through him, both of us having the one spirit, our way to come to the Father. The word of the Lord. Amen. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The sheep that belongs to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and thought. 
Then he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place, all by yourselves, and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going, that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place, where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many could guess where. And from every town they all hurried to the place on foot, and reached it before them. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. The pages of the Gospels are full of constant activity led by Jesus and the disciples. Nevertheless, the invitation to rest that Jesus proposes to the disciples in today's Gospel is remarkable. In truth, rest is essential to better feel the needs of others, to be filled with compassion, and even to better hear what God whispers in the breeze. It only lasted a brief crossing of the lake, the rest that Jesus wanted to give the disciples. Their eyes were shining full of joy because of the mission Jesus entrusted to them and how must have Jesus had looked to them with kindness and love. How many times I find myself imagining how Jesus looked to his disciples. And can you imagine that as well? Therefore, that short both trip, the exchange of expressions and words, had the flavour of an enormous trip. One of those trips when the eyes embrace whatever they find and are astonished and delighted with what they see. I marvel at Jesus' words to his disciples after the first mission, going with him, to a lonely place, to take a rest. This is an uplifting invitation. Even the urgency of proclaiming the kingdom of God takes into account human needs, patience, awareness of limits, time to let it grow, savouring and contemplating what has been said and done, sharing and giving thanks, putting everything in God's hands, are just as or more essential than the work itself. But this short both crossing pointed out something important. Jesus looked full of compassion for the crowds. And this is only possible for us when we are available with our whole heart. It is the availability that is asked of parents for their children, teachers for students, rulers for the ruled shepherds for the sheep. Without it, others become strangers, numbers for statistics, anonymous crowds. Efficiency, success, productivity and goals are important, but we can't forget about compassion. It is essential to discover the gift of God that is in us and in others, the common need to be listened to and to be loved. Jesus look leaves nothing the same. It illuminates, blesses, saves, compromises. It is this look that he puts in our eyes and that so often we willingly or carelessly neglect. So the important question that I would like you to think today is, what do I need to look and see like Jesus? There are great little things that help us to prevent our blindness less speech and more action, less judgment and more forgiveness, less indifference and more mutual help, less darkness and more light, less sadness and more happiness, and less isolation and more sharing. In these times where we are gradually meeting with each other again, let's enjoy more this eye-to-eye contact. Let's be pleased to be able to see each other again, to all who have initiated or will initiate a period of holidays, 
Please don't forget to take Jesus with you. Enjoy resting with him. He will definitely enjoy resting with you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Um, in our bidding prayer, we make our special request to God, our Father. For the whole Church, our Mother. <clears throat> May the Church always glorify the name of Jesus and announce with courage and determination the true Gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For Christians who have lost faith and for believers of all religions, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For Jesus, the Master, who knows how to teach others, may he have compassion on those who do not know him. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For those who have lost hope, those who were wrongfully convicted, and those who live in exile far from home, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For all the members of our parish, may we always be near to those who are most in need, offering them our hands and our comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For those who have died, we pray especially for all of our loved ones who have died and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we ask for Mary's prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. We ask you, God, our loving Father, to grant all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, that we have made today in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
and work of human hands and you become our spirit as for us the bread of life. Amen. 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 you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And may our sacrifice of you sought this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, what we have done for my sins. Sisters, brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law except we pray this sacrifice from our your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. <coughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you <coughs> and in joyful celebration we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chaps, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that for taking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your servant, Sinner Seamus, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with you in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us all be shut up Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, amen.
gracious, the merciful, has made a memorial of his wonders, he gives food to those who hate him. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you sacramentally, but I am unable to do so at this time. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I accept you and embrace you and unite myself wholly with you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you for being here this morning and enjoy the Dublin weather, especially if you're visiting the city. Thank you. So the final prayer of the Mass. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just while we wait for um, the distribution of communion, um, I'd like to take just a minute to update you on discussions that we volunteers have been having with Pan and Jerry about the arrangements for masses and private prayer after today, given the new government guidelines. You will be aware that COVID cases are still rising nationally and local incidence is quite high. In view of this, and because we will, will only have one Mass each week until the beginning of August, we've decided at the moment to keep most existing arrangements in place. We will review them again at the beginning of August, just two weeks away, when we are due to move back to three Masses a week. This means that booking is still essential for Sunday morning Mass, so that we are able to operate a seating plan like today that takes account of a continuing need for social distancing inside church. We do request that everyone continues to wear a mask inside church. You will still be invited to sanitize your hands on entry to church and prior to communion. And Sunday Mass will continue to be live streamed for the time being. Private prayer on Saturdays will also continue in the meantime, and there will be votive candles from next week at the back of the church that can be lit on Saturday mornings and after Masses. We hope you will continue to feel safe coming to Mass and continue to support our volunteers in the tremendous efforts they are making on our behalf. And finally, for the readers and Eucharistic ministers amongst us, uh, I'm pleased to point out that the rotors are now at the back. You can start volunteering again for future Masses. Thank you for your patience.